Lady Sandra Lim inviting you to go out on a limb. So I am back at Sue's Public House again. Yes, uh, last month I was here to try its dim sum. It was really good. So I'm back to try its dinner tonight because I'm really curious to see how it fares in the dinner day part. So according to Eden New York, Sue's Public House is the most compelling newcomer yet in the luxury Chinese dining scene uh, here in New York City. So I'm really curious. So come eat with me and see if I agree with Eden New York. Let's talk about the menu. The menu is similar to the one I saw when I came for dim sum last time. You have a variety of things to choose from at dinner, although there are much fewer dim sum items because dim sum is uh, only served till 5 o'clock. Uh, so you actually start with the um, cold plates, uh, several cold plates, the Shanghai spare ribs, uh, uh, it's amazing. Uh, you have the hot plates as well uh, and many of the dim sum items are actually found here in the hot plates like the uh, famous barbecue pork buns um, as well as the Shanghai soup dumplings uh, which you'll find at dim sum as well. Uh, you have the fresh noodles, more variety of the noodles uh, including the hand-picked crab meat scallion noodles. Uh, you have more main courses here as well uh, like the uh, slow braised pork belly as well as the uh, flaming uh, ribeye uh, steak and sauteed tiger prawns and lobster risotto as well and some classic favorite uh, aka American Chinese food that non-Asian diners look for uh, they actually it's, it's quite limited but at least they want to keep a feel uh, for those uh, diners who don't want to venture out uh, they have fried rice and they have um, you know, ch orange chicken and orange beef which incidentally the orange beef uh, was voted uh, by Eaters New York's uh, food critic Robert Satsima as one of the worst dishes uh, this year in 2019 so definitely room for improvement there and for desserts you have a lot of the Asian based desserts uh, the creamy egg yolk buns uh, that you find at dim sum and that was actually really tasty uh, so Kenny was really transparent, uh, which I really appreciate uh, when he talked to me. Uh, he basically said that he uh, really emphasized on quality, the broth, you know, you actually simmer it uh, over hours with either uh, duck bones or chicken bones or, you know, double clean pork bones, uh, in, in, including dried scallop and, and abalone as well. Uh, you know, like the exo sauce is homemade, it's actually MSG free. So basically, he really insists on quality, as you can tell. Although, I think uh, towards the end of this review, you see that there's some dishes that have problems with execution. So, even though they don't tout themselves as a tea house, the selection and offering of tea here uh, is really good. And I think it's ingenious that for the table snack, they offer the uh, famous egg waffle. I mean, this is a popular street snack in Asia, as well as in Chinatown, New York. Um, my only complaint is that it's not crunchy enough. One of the main dishes we went with uh, was the uh, braised pork belly. Uh, it looks really good. It comes with a uh, plump scallop as well. Uh, the only thing I want to complain about here is that the uh, pork belly, the fat part, does not have the melt in your mouth feel. Uh, it's a little bit firmer than I like. The uh, scallop, on the other hand, uh, is done really well. I mean, it's plump, it's juicy, and it's tender. So, scallop save the dish. Uh, drunken chicken is a uh, dish that you should order if you want to know if a restaurant call that calls itself Shanghainese restaurant if it's any good. So in this case, uh, Zoo's public house did not disappoint with the drunken chicken. It's good. Another dish that you should order if you want to know if a Chinese restaurant is any good is uh, sauteed vegetables. In this case, the pea shoots that we ordered were crunchy uh, and juicy and flavorful. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for the soup dumplings. Uh, it was an off night compared to the last time I came here. It was mushy and it was rather tasteless. So they, they mess it up tonight. I mean, the skin's soggy, the meat's not flavorful. Must be a busy night. Yeah. Mm. I can get better ones if I <laughs> 
the truffle wontons was also a bit off compared to the last time. Uh, it was not as flavorful. The exo sauce, I mean the shrimp, uh, the scallops were really fresh, but exo sauce were kind of weak. I mean, they make their own exo sauce according to Kenny, but uh, you know, it could be more flavorful. But the shrimp was definitely fresh. And this uni pastry, you know, I just have to laugh at this because it's a very tiny paste, pastry, it's smaller than the palm of my hand. It costs $30. Uh, yeah, I think it's a bit overpriced. I mean, the uni itself, it's really fresh. Uh, it's from Hokkaido. Uh, it's the red uni from Hokkaido, hence the higher price. Um, and the pastry itself, I think there is a, a 25 layer handicraft Chinese pastry. Uh, but the combination is, is not, did not work that well, if you ask me. This thing is thirty dollars. That's right. Uh, the barbecue pork buns uh, that still remain really good and crispy. Uh, same goes to the uh, crispy fried rice, the cramp, the king crab crispy fried rice with scallop that remain tasty. So all in all, I think if you want to try Sue's Public House, just come for dim sum first. Uh, they still need to work on their dinner offerings if you ask me. Uh, execution wise is a bit off. Service is actually um, very unpolished. I mean, our server asks us if you wanted to order dessert uh, when we we're ordering appetizer. So. Uh, overall, I think it's uh, in an off night for them, but there's definitely room for improvement. I think either New York probably thought about their dim sum when they said that you know they were the uh, latest uh, newcomer uh, that's most promising in the fine dining Chinese scene in New York. Uh, because if you ask me, I think dinner-wise, uh, there is definitely room for improvement.